Hello and welcome to CRK TV, your one-stop shop for all things photographic, cinematography and professional imaging. On our very own platform, bringing you all the latest and greatest in technology, interviews, reviews, tips and tricks on photo and video. Even with the restrictions easing, the restriction laws easing up, we're still dedicated to producing all this content for you to enjoy in the comfort of your own home. Just a reminder, all our live streams are pre-recorded, so if you miss this, you'll have the chance to replay this episode on, you, on our YouTube channel, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for all upcoming and future content. Like all fundamentals in a skilled profession, film has, has, has a very important place in photography. Understanding the basic principles of film and its processes, and you will inevitably improve this, your scope as a photographer. And now with the resurgence of analog photography, let's look at how easy you can shoot, process, edit, and print with this wonderful medium. Today we have a fabulous episode on Ilford. As a company and global market leader, we are the only manufacturer in the world to provide a full range of black and white film, darkroom paper, photochemistry, and auxiliary products, and much, much more. Joining me is our resident photographer and sales specialist, John Wallace, to talk all about developing film at home. John, thank you for joining us. Exciting episode, this one. What do you have in store for us today? Uh, afternoon, Clem. So today we're going to be talking about Ilford and we're going to talk about Ilford film and how you can process Ilford film at home. Uh, Ilford's been around for a really long time. Uh, it was one of the four founders of the photographic industry, along with people like George Eastman from Kodak. But uh, Ilford is still around um, and still going strong. In fact, even stronger. So what we wanted to do was just uh, give you a brief overview of the Ilford product and a brief run through on how to process film at home in your own Patterson tank. I've got some Patterson tanks here. So uh, we won't process film live though, but we'll, we'll just sort of do a dummy run. And, uh, and then we'll discuss it, what we can do with those negatives after we've processed them. Uh, so that'll be pretty interesting. So if we can just have a look at uh, the Ilford film range, uh, if we can get that up on screen. Okay, so the Ilford's film basically comes in uh, four speeds. And when we say speeds, that's the same as for digital people. ISO relates back to speed. So the lower the, I the ISO of the film, the less sensitive it is, but the less grain it has. So the first film we've got there is Ilford Pan F+, Plus, which is a classic lo low speed, low grain, fine grain film. Uh, and that comes in, uh, that comes in uh, 35 mil and 120. And we'll talk about formats a bit that, later. That should be smooth, smooth and silky. Smooth and silky, yeah, apparently. Yeah. yeah, very good. I'm not a big fan of the 50 ISO film. It's a bit slow for me. It's hard, hard to shoot handheld. Jump. Hard to shoot ha handheld. You Always need a, need a tripod. A lot of sunlight. or A tripod. lot of sunlight or a long exposure. So next one is uh, FP4, which is a classic ISO 125 film. This, is, uh, this has been around since year dot. Uh, it is the go-to film for just about every professional photographer who's, who, sh who shot film back in the day and still shoots film now. Um, again, that's still available in 35 and 120 uh, millimeter roll, and it's also available in sheet film st still, like 4x5. Uh, in fact, all our Ilford films you can get in 4x5 sheet film, which is amazing. Uh, now, the next one is uh, HP5. This is a classic press film, ISO 400, but the good thing about this film is we can rate this up to 3200 ISO. So it's a low light, high speed film. This is uh, the most amazing film because even though shooting at 3200, the grain is absolutely amazing. Super popular this one, John. Super popular. Uh, we always sell out, don't we? We always sell out. It's a famous film. Uh, I would say quite a large percentage of the world's most famous photos have been shot on ISO, on HP5 film because uh, it was a stock standard film for press photographers for many, 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 many years. Um, and still available now. Uh, we've also then go into our more specialized films uh, to the Delta. Now what Delta film is, it's, a, it's 
the grain structure is a lot more finer. Um, that's why we call it delta, because the grains themselves look triangular, hmm. like a triangle and sharp edged. So again, we have ISO 100 delta film, absolutely pin sharp, uh, designed to take advantage of those really, really, really good lenses uh, that came along later in the uh, film era. But delta is uh, a little bit more tricky to process and a little bit more tricky to I expose. But um, if done properly, it's the most amazing film. Uh, the next one is Delta 400. And again, like HP5, this, this is a faster film, but it doesn't have the latitude of HP5. Uh, Delta 400 is again an, a fine grain, fine sharpness film. The next one, though, is Delta 3200. Now, this is specifically uh, designed to be used in low light. And it's quick. Excellent low light performance. So if you relate back to your digital camera and when you shoot on 3200 ISO, very good for low light. The film is the same. So we're shooting this at 3200. We're capturing low light. It has excellent shadow detail and highlight retention. It's a beautiful film. And the next one is that's it that's it six that, in the range six in the range there is a few others but they're the key films that we have um, now we're going to talk a bit about uh, how to process film uh, so the first thing where we do need, you start John we start with the Patterson tank now I'm just going to open up the Patterson tank here and we'll have a look and see what's inside inside the Patterson tank are reels they sit on a little spindle and our film is going to be loaded on these reels here. Now, the first caveat, of course, is we do all of this in the yeah. dark. Because if we do it in the daylight, we're going to expose our film and all our pictures will be gone. And it'd be too easy. Yeah, and it would be too easy. You don't want to make it too easy. I've got a roll of film here, which we're going to open up. And we'll have a look in what happens inside this roll of film. So in the dark, and I stress in the dark, we open up Oof. our roll of film. And this is where live... Uh, <laughs> Live streaming, live, it's live gonna streaming get you in trouble. Gets you in trouble. So normally we can clip in the there we go. We'll clip in the edge there. And we pull our film out, and there she is. Okay, so in the dark, we then clip the edge, making sure we don't chop our fingers off. It's an occupational health and safety issue. And then we get our reel, and I don't know if you guys can see this. They can see it. They can see it. Now I'll just see we've got two little teeth in there, two lugs in our reel, and then we're getting a good look at them. What we do is we place our film in these two lugs, like this, and it feeds onto the reel. And then oh, there's two little ball bearings that will then grab the film. Okay. And then we just twist, and on she goes. Our film goes into the reel, just make sure it doesn't all curl up. Like this, twist, we load, in she goes. Beautiful. All in the dark, remember we're not in the light yet. We're in the dark. And pitch Nicely dark. Finessed. Yeah, pitch, pitch black. No film. Yep. Uh, no, sorry, no light. Um, and someone's phone's just going off, which is interesting. And we're loading the reel. And on the end, we've got another little spool here. And we can just pull that off like that. Throw it away. OK. Then we grab our reel. We put it on our spindle like that. And we drop it in our tank. Now, the basic Patterson tank can take two reels. So we could do two at once. Or we could do one 120 format just by opening up our reel like this. Mm. Clicking it shut, and that will then take 120 format. Same way we just loaded 35 mil. One reel to do it all. One reel to rule them all. It's a Lord of the Rings reference. The, <laughs> we got it. Yeah, oh good. Uh, so to make this light tight so we can turn our light on, we need to put our little light trap in the top here. We just click that shut. Now this is now light tight. We can now turn the light on, and away we go. So what we'll do now is we'll first process, and if we can just have the process up on screen, we'll run, we'll run quickly through the process so we can see. I'll throw him out. That's all right. There we are. Start with the, the process. So photographic film we have in the tank now. 
We've exposed our film, we've taken some pictures, and now we're gonna push them, and now we're gonna put them in the tank, and now we're ready, first of all, for our developer bath. What I will normally do, though, is I will wash the film before I put my developer in. Uh, now, the critical things with chemistry as well, and the wash, is that temperature is the most critical thing with all these chemistries. We need to be at 20 degrees Celsius any warmer and it will increase the developing so it'll increase the uh, power of the developer and so we'll get effectively a faster pushed film so we'll get denser negatives any colder and it will slow down the development so they, they won't develop properly um, so the first bath is of course developer after we've washed it we put our developer in uh, we put our lid on okay Put our developer in and usually for about six to nine minutes we will then every minute agitate the can we show the agitation we'll agitate five times every minute five times with the developer inside bang it on the table that was very noisy <laughs> and then tap it like this and uh, the bubbles that adhere to the film during the uh, developing process will then come off and we won't get any little bubble marks on our film. So we do that to maybe six or nine minutes depending on the combination of the film, uh, temperature and developer. And then we, when we're finished, we tip our, film, our developer out, tip our developer out, and then we add, do another wash. Now, some people say we use a stop bath, which I think is a lot better to stop the film developing. Uh, other people will just wash it for an extended period, but if you use a stop path, it'll stop film developing in its tracks. After we've uh, added our stop bath and we've run that for a minute, we then give it another wash, empty out the stop bath, and we put our fix in. Uh, we do the same process with fixing as we do with uh, developing. We agitate every minute for five inversions and we tap the tank. I won't do it again because it, uh, it's very loud. Um, we tap the tank and then uh, after five minutes our film is fixed and once the film is fixed we can then wash it for about 20 minutes add some hypo clear and then we can take it off our reel and it'll be ready to go of course this one's now not ready to do anything really because we've exposed it to light so it's all a bit stuffed that one but that's okay um, what we will do though is we will put the process on screen um, if we go forward and we'll see the process laid out on screen for us okay so the next thing you can do uh, is push processing now processing film has three critical aspects one of them is temperature which you mentioned before the other one is time and the other one is dilution uh, if we change any of these, we can increase the speed of the film. That is, we can change it from a 400 ISO film to a 1200 ISO film by increasing the time or making the dilution stronger or increasing the temperature. So that means we can rate our HP5 at 1200 ISO by increasing our time or any of those three uh, combinations or a combination of all of them, depending. A uh, couple of things will happen when we push process. We will get increased contrast, we will get more grain, uh, and we will get uh, loss of detail in our highlights, and also our shadows will block up a little. But films like HP5 uh, are excellent for push processing and will retain their highlight detail and their shadow detail, even up to ISO 3200. John, very well explained. You make it seem so, so easy. It is very easy, and you can do this at home, particularly if you've got one of these. It is one I bought down from upstairs. This is a dark bag. So our dark bag has two little armholes, which we put our hands in, and it has, on the back, a zipper. I don't know if we can see this, but inside, that's a little... That's a little cavity where we can put our tank and our film and we can then zip that up, put our hands in the armholes and it's light tight. 
So we can just sit in front of the TV and load our tanks. Isn't that what, good? What a way to do it. What that's, a way to is do that's it. A, that's an optional accessory. That, that is an optional accessory. No, no, no. That doesn't come with the Patterson Make tanks. Make sure you get the dark bag with the Patterson tanks. Yeah. Now, John, we've come to one of my favorite parts of the show, and that is question time. Oh. This is where people write time. in, watching the live stream, and see if they can trip you up with something nice and complicated oh, for you yes. to answer. Um, so the first question today, John, is from Kim. Oh, yes. Hi, Kim says, hi, John. Do you know if you can use Ilford black and white film when shooting the Ansel Adams zone system, generally used in landscape photography? Of course you can. Um, the zone system is a metering system, so it's not film dependent. Um, so if, for those people that don't know, Ansel Adams divided up his exposures into a zone system where he started off with black no detail. Yes. Which ran through up to white no detail. And he divided that scale into zones. So he would then allocate, for example, 18% grey would be one of his zones. And mm. he would expose based on that zone system. So it's film, it's not dependent on film. It's just a method of exposing film. Follow up question Did Ansel Adams use the Ilford film? Well, I have no idea. He was American, so I would hazard a guess. Yeah. Possibly, but I would hazard a guess possibly Kodak. Okay. Possibly. We don't know. It's one of those we mysteries. We don't know. It's one of those mysteries of the universe. I'm sure someone will know and someone will probably, perhaps Kim can find out and then uh, type <laughs> They can correct you in the comments below. And correct us in the comments. Um, so, John, now we've got to this part of the workflow with yep. film. Yep. Um, is there something more you want to talk about finishing off the film processing? Ah, or? yeah. Good idea. Yes. So, over here, uh, once we've got our film and we want to take it out of our tank, we can then use what's called wetting agent in the water, swizzle it around, soak it up nicely, pull it out, and we hang. We can then go into the bathroom or another convenient area and hang our film up with our with a peg on a like a line or somewhere nice and dust free or as dust free as you can get, and then we use one of these Patterson squeegees to squeegee off the water so it dries. Is that, nice is that an official term, a squeegee? Squeegee, look. There you squeegee. go, squeegee. Yeah, John really didn't make that up himself. No, no, no. That was invented by, no, probably wasn't invented by, by Dr. Patterson. Squeegee. The, the Dr. Squeegee, yeah. Absolutely. Film squeegee. Very, very critical piece of equipment. Um, also made by Patterson. So uh, just a little comment on Patterson too. Um, Patterson have been making the, these tanks uh, I don't know for how long, but obviously over a hundred years, uh, and they're the standard for developing film. It looks uh, like the technology the hasn't changed much in that time, it hasn't, really. It hasn't changed at all, and the Patterson reel uh, is has been around since even when I was first started up photography. Which, and that is a but, long time ago. Well, it's not that long, but it was it was long enough to it was long enough to uh, remember you shooting film and no digital. So. Keep, keep the that questions coming in, guys, because we, we love to test John's knowledge. John, the man with the, all the knowledge. Uh, this question is from Cecilia. Oh, Nice name. Mm. Um, is there any special handling requirements for the chemicals? There is. Um, on the Ilford website, there is a full safety, uh, the safety documents are all on the Ilford website. It's preferable that you don't pour the chemistry down the sink. Uh, that you uh, put it in a container and then call your local council to come and do a chemical waste pickup. Uh, but on the Ilford website, which is, uh, which is ilfordphoto.com, you can find uh, all the safety briefings online which tell you how to handle the chemistries. Mo most of the chemistries are inert, but also when you're handling them, please wear gloves and safety goggles so you don't get any in your eye if there's a splash, but definitely uh, also, don't dispose them down the sink because uh, the best way is to put them in a container and call your local council to come and pick them up and they'll dispose of them properly. Uh, but take all the normal precautions for handling chemistry, which is gloves, eye protection, and also it's a good idea to wear a uh, apron or something to cover your clothes because some of the chemistry will uh, mark your clothing if you get it on it. Good tips, John. Mm -hmm. A bit of... A bit of preparation is, is required before you dive into the dark room. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so John, the developing side of it now out of the way. Yep. Um, 
are we able to look at some images, see what, what this film can actually do? Let's have a look at some results. Let's look at, particularly let's see the difference between uh, HP5 and FP4. So I think the first one is a, is a HP5. And if we see this picture, you'll notice there's a really evident grain structure. I can see the grain. You can see the grain. Particularly in the sky. Yep, absolutely. And that's what you'll get with HP5. Uh, HP5 has a really nice grain structure, but it's definitely there and in... And you like want that grain, John. It's absolutely. I mean, absolutely. We, that's why you shoot film. Absolutely. Can you get the same aesthetic shooting digital? A lot of people out there are going to be wondering oh. today, can I get this effect on a digital camera? As a purist, I'd say no. But okay. that's just me and I'm an old fart. But a lot of, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of filters, there's a lot of plugins that say they're film. They look like film, but nothing looks like film shot by a film camera. You Absolutely nothing. You don't get that analog aesthetic. No. It's a chemical process. It's it's a chemical process, not a digital process. Exactly right. Very hard it's to nature replicate. At work. Nature at work. Uh, what, do we, what do we have going on in this one? This HP5 portrait. That's HP5. So you'll see the grain mostly in the solid blocks of tone. So in the blacks, you won't see much grain, but anything in like skin tones or anything above 18% grey, you'll start to see a bit of grain creeping in for HP5. But if we look at FP4, and I think we've got an, here we go, um, FP4 is almost grainless. Um, grainless? Grainless. So if you don't want the grains... FP4. FP4. Absolutely. FP4 or Pan F. Pan F, yep. Pan F is, uh, again, that is a step downwards in grain from FP4. That's so smooth. That's smooth as they come. Absolutely. Smooth, smooth as, as silk. silk. Smooth as silk. It's particularly relevant, and here's, again, you'll see the skin tones very different to HP5. You can't really see the grain structure in the, in the mid-tones. Beautiful, even, silky grain. It's not really uh, evident that there's grain there. There's not. It's FP4. You're FP4 and want even more of that would, would go for the Pan F. Absolutely. Uh, the only problem with Pan F, of course, is it's so slow. So, so tripod. Slow. You, need, you need a lot of light. You need a lot of light or a good tripod or someone who doesn't move very fast. Um, it was great the different effects you can get with these different films. I will remind everyone that all these films are available to purchase from our website, crkphotoimaging.com.au, the complete range of Ilford black and white films are ready and available there. So if you want to get in and purchase some of those films, that is where to go, crkphotoimaging.com.au. Um, so John, um, is there any one of these films that you want to talk about in particular now? or I definitely want to talk a bit about, I just want to touch on HP5, because HP5 is the classic film that pretty much everybody can use. It's quite forgiving. It doesn't mind being over or underexposed. Uh, if you develop it at the right temperature, it'll pretty much take it'll pretty much take care of itself. Uh, it's also fantastic for all the plastic camera enthusiasts, all the lamography enthusiasts. There's HP5, so if we can, it's the green one, the we, one with green. We have some here in the studio, yeah. but green. they're they're hard to come by. We're actually sold out, other than this. Mm. This little batch of stock we've got here. During the COVID virus, of course, they had to shut down because they're an English company. So we haven't yet been able to get stock out of them uh, in, in the proper numbers. But they are back in production, which is fantastic. Uh, they actually named themselves after the town that they were founded in. So they actually, the factory is still in Ilford, uh, which is a suburb Ilford of London. Ilford in England. Yeah. Yeah. So they've still, they're still in Ilford after 100 plus years, uh, but they're back in production now after the, in, after the COVID scare, which is fantastic. So we should have plenty on its way. So you two can shoot like your famous, your favorite pro of yesteryear. Absolutely. It would have shot on Ilford. It's got such a long and rich history. Absolutely. It was a go-to film back in the days of black and white film. Absolutely. And if you want to replicate that type of aesthetic, you can get that very same film today still made in the UK. One other point we want to make about Ilford John is that it's the only brand in which you can shoot on Ilford film, then scan this film uh, onto your computer and print out on an inkjet printer on Ilford paper. It is the only 
brand where you can do the full workflow from analog to a printed inkjet paper image. Absolutely. And that's something special because there's also a range of Ilford inkjet uh, gallery paper, um, which is also available on our website, crkphotoimaging.com.au. So if you wanted to do a bit of a digital touch up after shooting on analog film and then print out on Ilford paper, that is possible. And Ilford is the only brand in which you can do that. Absolutely. And there's labs in every capital city who will be able to, if you don't want to process it yourself, uh, that's fine. You can take it to your local friendly mini lab or, or professional lab who will process for you. But the most important thing about these labs is they can scan. Uh, so you can now process your film, you can always process your film at home, take it to the lab, get it scanned. Uh, they'll give you a, C, a, a, a disk back or a Dropbox folder and then you, you've got digital files that you can work with and then you can print them out on your inkjet printer. And Ilford Gallery, particularly gold fibre silk and gold fibre gloss, are designed to mimic almost identically uh, Ilford photographic paper. And I've got some Ilford photographic paper, the classic multi-grade on the desk here. Yeah. We can just have a look at that on screen. You can go to that. So that's Ilford photographic paper for printing Ilford film. Um, but we've managed to mimic that with our Ilford gallery paper, particularly gold fibre silk, gold fibre gloss and gold fibre pearl. They're designed to mimic this paper almost identically and it is so difficult to tell the difference nowadays between a silver halide paper and an inkjet paper. Shoot at home and see if you can tell the difference. Try it out. A good point about the labs there, John. Do you have a go-to lab here in Sydney? Someone I do. want to give a shout out to? I do. Big shout out to the people at Rewind and also to the guys at Vision Graphics, two fantastic labs. Absolutely. Real Rewind in, in Glebe the near Sydney University. Absolutely. Real and uh, Vision Graphics in Alexandria. Okay. Two local go-tos here in Sydney where you can shoot on the film and, and get them to do all the hard work for you. If you, don't want to, if you don't want to process it yourself on the Patterson tank, you can you can. They'll do it for you. Um, and, and great people too. And we're really seeing a resurgence in film nowadays, aren't we? There's a hipster Absolutely. movement, analog photographers coming back, analog's a new digital. It's trendy, it's cool, it's a new art form. Um, what do you say to people who are just getting into analog film? Maybe people who have been shooting digital for a while. Um, youngsters, they never experienced analog John. No. Um, any advice you'd give people getting into analog photography? I'd say pick up a really good analog camera. There's some classics you can mm. get. Um, out, for example, the classic Pentax K1000. Oh. Can you get How that? How many of those were made? I mean, you can pick them It'll up relatively. They'll be more expensive to... now than they were when they were new. <laughs> Probably more expensive than the new Pentax. Um, <laughs> So Pentax K1000, uh, Nikon FM2, uh, Canon A1, uh, there's also Minolta cameras as yeah. well. Uh, some of the Minoltas will also use the new Sony Alpha lenses, for example. And so, some of these are very, very affordable, aren't they, John? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's some uh, great secondhand deals you can get on eBay. Uh, you can pick up cheap 120 format cameras, Mamiya C330s, uh, Mamiya RBs, uh, Hasselblads. You can still pick up Hasselblad 6.6s online, uh, which are amazing cameras. Uh, eBay is sort of the place to go, but there's a couple of, uh, there's one, uh, a store in uh, Sydney, in King Street, Newtown, called Sydney Super 8, who has lots and lots of second-hand cameras. There's also uh, a massive store in uh, the CBD in Melbourne called Michael's, yes. who has a huge, Good. huge second-hand department. Also, Camera Lane, Camera as, Lane. Way, as well. Classic store. Classic store. Uh, Alan and CBD. Venus, there in, uh, in, in Melbourne. But you can pick up uh, really good uh, film cameras, cheaply, online anywhere and then you're good to go. Uh, you can start shooting and they'll perform as good as or near uh, a lot of modern digitals once they scan the pictures in. So you'll be surprised how amazing Just a, twen a $20 old school film camera and yep. your $10 canister of Ilford film yes. and away you go. Away you Very go low on barrier the to entry Absolutely. for any hobby, artistic pursuit. Absolutely, and they look really good. They look good. Dare we say it, sometimes they look better than, than the clinical digital output 
that people Absolutely are spending thousands on. You spend thirty dollars on your analog getup. I mean, look, there's a lot of film to be purchased mm. for the price of a digital camera. That's true. That's true. Absolutely, and you have complete creative control over the process. Let and let the film do the work for you in terms of bringing Absolutely. out those ni ca nice characteristics. Absolutely, you don't have to do too much to get something looking unique. Absolutely, and this doesn't sit on a hard drive. Once it's you've not. processed it, it's archival. And a very long archival life. No <laughs> very doubt. long archival it's life. It's going to last a long time. They don't they don't build it like like they used to, as they say. Um, so, John. Um, We've spoken a bit about the history of Ilford. Is there anything else you want to you want to talk about in terms of the Ilford, the brand? Oh, I did want to just touch on, and we're just going to go back a little bit to formats, to film formats, and if we can just put that up on the screen, just go back to film formats. Have we got film formats? Oh no, we haven't got a slide for film formats. But I you just, just want to look, look at us. I'll just you, you can just look at us. So what we've got here and we showed you before is 35 mil. Okay, that's a sprocketed film. Uh, and that was basically cine film that they turned into stills film. There you go. The next one up is 120 format. Uh, 120 format is six centimeters wide and that's a roll film, no sprockets. Okay. Uh, traditionally 120 film was used in things or, one, or film like it in, in cameras like the box brownie. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's a traditional uh, rolled film with no sprockets. And above that, we have sheet film. And that'll go up to 4 by 5 inch or 8 by 10 inch. Uh, we can still get bigger than that, but it's special order. But most of our films we can still get in 8 by 10 and 4 by 5. So if you want to experiment with field cameras, uh, then you still can. So we can resurrect some of those bellows cameras and shoot 4 by 5 using dark slides and field cameras still. After 100, over 100 years, we can still shoot these analog classics with Ilford film. Isn't that incredible? It's amazing. Absolutely incredible. It's absolutely amazing. The only thing limiting you is your imagination. Yes, and the ability to lug these really heavy cameras a long distance. But, you know, there you go. Those two things. Those two things. Um, all right, John, well, um, thank you very much for coming to the studio today and Anytime. sharing with us your absolute wealth of knowledge. Um, it's quite incredible and very impressive. Um, we've delved into Ilford, the rich history of the brand, and um, explained to everyone how you too can become a hipster, start yes. exploring your Easy. new creative passion, get right back into analog film. All the products are available on our website that you need to get into film photography, crkphotoimaging.com.au. Thanks again for joining us, guys. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, shoot some questions in the comment section below, and we'll get back to you with some answers. If you've got any more questions, stay tuned. Until next time, for another exciting show. John, happy Friday. Happy Everyone Friday, Clem. All the best. Thank you very much.